What's the fashion accessory everyone is talking about? Earrings, today on Beads, Baubles, and Jewels. I'm here with Doreen Stevens from Fire Mountain Gems and Beads, and Doreen is here to educate us about glass beads. Hi, Doreen. Hi. You have brought some really amazing things with you, and I, I find this so fascinating. What are we going to start with? Today we're going to talk about the three most popular selling beads uh, right now. Okay. The first one is a is a lampwork bead, mm -hmm. and why it's it's also known as a wound bead. A lampwork bead starts off with a torch, mm -hmm. and it's also known as a lamp, and that's how they got their name. Ah. We're going to talk about a couple of the tools. Uh, here are the glass rods, and these come in all different shapes and sizes, it's and they're beautiful. That, that ends up being a bead. <laughs> oh, it is. It is. Uh, they're all in beautiful, beautiful colors. The second tool, and the most important, really, mm -hmm. is the steel rod. The steel rods are coated with a. a a bead release mm -hmm. and that helps as, as the bead is turned and worked in the flame that will help the bead come off of the uh the rod after it's completed. So I'm going to show you a couple pictures of okay. what the process looks like. Here's a bead and it's begun, you can see the melted rod here, mm -hmm. and the bead is, is constantly wound in the flame. Wow. And it's it really requires two-handed dexterity because you're working with, you're winding with one hand and working with the glass with the other. And adding different colors and that sort of thing. Lots of different tools similar to the steel tool that's up there, that's actually graphite, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, lots of different tools are used to shape the beads in different cylindrical and round patterns. Mm-hmm. And then here is, this oh, is a, that. this is one technique, and this will eventually be a flower, but it starts off with a lot of dots. Little pieces of uh, glass dots are added, still turning all the time. Then more wow. colors are added, constantly in the flame. And you can see this one's called a stringer. It's a, a bit thinner piece of glass. Mm -hmm. Then another tool, while the glass is still molten, another tool takes those dots and gathers them into flowers. Wow. Then the another skill technique. Is amazing. It is. Mm -hmm. It's it's really an incredible art. Uh, after the flowers are formed, you can see that in the background of the of the bead. One of the great techniques is to add a coating of glass over, and it kind of makes it look like a fishbowl. It gives the pattern a lot of depth. Oh, okay. Here's some of the examples mm -hmm. on the foreground there. Some of the examples of the what the different variety and colors of the lampwork beads are. They really are. Now, um, sometimes when I take uh, my glass beads out, they have a little bit of a powder residue. Where does that oh, come from? That's a great question. Uh, that is the bead release. And it, the bead release is kaolin. It's a clay compound. Okay. And it does leave a residue. If you look inside of the, some of the bead holes as we show you the beads, it leaves a residue in there. It's non-toxic. It, it can be washed off. Off with water. Okay, so they they need it. It's part of the process. Yes, okay. yes. This is actually kind of interesting. Without this, mm -hmm. you can't get the bead off. This is one I did, and it's really sad. You put all that work into the bead, and then it <laughs> won't come off the rod. Gotcha. So it's some kind of a, I don't know. It's some kind of a, a, an yeah. adornment. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Okay, what's this type of glass here? The next type is a pressed bead, and pressed beads were made famous in the Czech Republic, mm -hmm. and because of the quality of their steel molds and the color and the quality of their glass, it's very very high quality. Mm -hmm. So what happens is in this process, this piece of glass, they all look like this when they begin with, they're stretched out a little bit thinner so they can physically fit in between the steel molds. Now the steel molds are either on a machine, mechanically mm -hmm. pressed like this, or on tongs. And as the, as the glass is placed in between them, the steel mold will close like this. Oh. And it actually creates a pressed version, a male gotcha. and female version. Wow. Now, when do you add um, the hole on the bead? Oh, the, the hole, as in this example, the hole is actually created in the be uh -huh. in the pressing process. On this side, this one's a little smashed because it's an old mold. Uh, there's a, a, a wire, and then there's a void on the other side. So the hole is actually created ah. as it's being pressed. Really here pretty. are some. These were buttons, mm -hmm. and it still looks. There's some excess glass here, as in this example. The excess glass is kind of chipped away and ground away, mm -hmm. and then the piece is put into polish, and then uh, creates beautiful three-dimensional shapes like you see before us. Right, I was going to say, and you brought some great examples of those too. Look yes, at that. There, there's super variety in these, and one of their best attributes is that they're very, mm -hmm. very uniform. You can use them mm -hmm. in, in very tight patterns. Now, this is amazing, this next type of glass that we're going to talk about, and I'll help you out here. You brought some great pictures with you. Now, what type of glass huh. is this one? These are called cane beads, mm. and they're also known as a drawn bead. And how the process for these cane beads starts is in a hot furnace, okay. as you see there. In the first picture. 
And on the end of a very long steel rod, there's a, a molten, okay. inside of that furnace, there's a molten ball oh. of glass. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's called a gather, and it's accumulated on the end. In the next one, here. way down on the end, the bead artist will blow a hole, physically blow a hole in that gather of glass. At this point, all of the colors are added, mm -hmm. uh, any patterns that they desire. Okay, what's then the next, next step? step oh, look someone, at that. someone else actually grabs a hold of that glass, molten <laughs> ball of glass, and starts pulling it just like it was taffy. Yeah, and that's what it reminds me of. <laughs> Literally, in the next picture, you'll oh, see. Oh my they, goodness! Look how long it stretches. They pull it until it's about the the width of what they want of the of you know the desired bead. Mm -hmm. They actually literally pull it in long strings across the room, and it maintains the hole in the bead. Unbelievable! And here's some great examples of that as well. Mm -hmm. Beautiful. And you can see you can make bracelets, you can make earrings, you can make so many different things. It's incredible. You've also brought some other things with you. Do you want to um, start over there with sure. that necklace? These are some great examples of the different type of beads. This first one, the multicolor, is all lampwork beads. And lampwork beads come, they're, they're a bit more dimensional in this piece. You can mm -hmm. see the flowers are kind of raised up. And they have what we call bumpy beads. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when, the, the, uh, in the pictures, the little dots aren't flattened out. They're left bumpy like that. Okay. The second one is pressed beads. And um, they are uh, just a great example of the different dimension. Yeah. Then we have also more pressed beads, cane, and uh, some other uniform pressed beads on the They're on the last display. Absolutely gorgeous. Once again, Doreen, we just learned so much from you. You can <laughs> get all you. this information. It's incredible. Thank you. It's Thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Well, next up is Fashion Focus, and we're going to be focusing in on earrings.